Welcome to This Week in BJJ, the world's first and only live jiu-jitsu show. Brought to you by Q5 Labs, Stay Alpha. Now here's your host, Budo Jake. Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of This Week in BJJ. I'm Budo Jake and I'm here to tell you all of the news in the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world for the week. We've got a lot of things to talk about today, including a brand new grappling promotion called Five Grappling, a Helsinki Gracie promotion, the Abu Dhabi Pro results, and a brand new show Royal Gi coming right around the corner. Let's check out the news. So there's a brand new grappling company uh, around called Five Grappling. These guys uh, had a, an, a meeting that I was invited to a couple weeks ago in uh, Hollywood. And uh, it was very interesting because they brought together guys like Andre Galvao, Sean Williams, Alberto Crane, Shanji Hibero, Mackenzie Dern, Guillermo Mendes, Rafael Lovato Jr., and a bunch of other guys all, to all get together and talk about what we'd like to see uh, in a new grappling tournament. CEO of Five, Dan Henson, stated, We felt the best way to approach building a new grappling circuit was to first sit down and listen to what the athletes, coaches, parents, media, and brands wanted to see. Five's first event will be on June 29th in Toronto, and a complete schedule for all 2013 events will be released in the coming weeks. These guys are planning to have a lot of events all across America, and I'm excited to see what they bring to the table. Next up is Helson Gracie. Uh, Helson is the second oldest son of Helio Gracie. Uh, uh, Horion is the oldest. And on April 7th, Helson was promoted to the rank of Red Belt, the highest possible rank in Jiu Jitsu. Horion Gracie presented him with the belt. He also received a certificate from the Hawaii House of Representatives. And uh, Helson's been teaching in the U.S. since 1985, in Hawaii since 1988. And our congratulations go out to him. It's not often that you see a new Red Belt. Okay, let's talk about Abu Dhabi Pro. This tournament's going on as we speak. It's a four or five day tournament held in Abu Dhabi. And although I haven't been able to see any of the matches yet, I do have the results here for you. So if you don't want to know the results, uh, tune out for a couple minutes. Under 64 kilos, Tiago Marquez defeated Samuel Herzog. Under 70 kilos, Augusto Tanquinho Mendes defeated Cobrinha. Under 76 kilos, Leandro Lowe defeated Lucas Lepri. Under 82 kilos, Marco Souza defeated Victor Estima. Under 88 kilos, Andre Galvao defeated Homolo Bajal due to injury. Under 94 kilos, Adolfo Vieira defeated Pedro Perez. Under 100 kilos, Antonio Braganetto defeated Jose Jr. And over 100 kilos, Marcus Almeida def- uh, and uh, Cavaca, uh, I believe uh, Cavaca took the gold there. Now for the ladies. Under 60 kilos, Michelle Nicolini defeated Mackenzie Dern. Under 66 kilos, Beatrice Mesquita defeated Luana Alzaguirre. Under 72 kilos, Caroline De Laser defeated Fernanda Maselli. Above 72 kilos, Gabby Garcia continued her uh, her ownership of the of the division by defeating Tammy Griego. Congratulations, all you guys. And the open weight matches are going to be uh, happening today. We have a brand new sponsor on the show called Q5. Q5 makes the only supplements that are custom tailored to fit the jiu-jitsu athlete. I've been uh, taking these supplements myself for the past couple of weeks, and I got to tell you, the two that excite me the most, I mean, they make a, a full line of uh, of pills and joint protection and protein, but the Warrior Purple and the Warrior Green products are amazing. These are The Warrior Purple is all the, the fruits that you're supposed to be eating on a daily basis. The uh, Warrior Green is all the vegetables. All you do is get one scoop of this, put it in eight, o- 8 to 10 ounces of water, and you're good to go. So it's a very healthy uh, drink, and uh, I think a lot of you guys out there are going to like it. You can get them on the Q5 site or on budovideos.com. Both sell for $29 a container. Next up, a uh, DVD that's uh, been in the works for a while. I know a lot of you have been looking forward to. That's the Barambolo DVD from Samuel Braga. This is going to be released as a DVD and as an app. Okay, guys, my name is Samuel Braga. I'm here today to show some cool techniques, special techniques on a Barambolo. This Edwin Najman, my good friend, came here to help me. We're going to be showing all these different special techniques never seen before. 
which which today is the most popular technique used by many many people in tournaments training is the most hot topic right now is the bearing bottle so check it out I'm gonna show some cool techniques So again, this is going to be released on DVD on April 18th and as an iTunes app shortly thereafter. And it'll also be available on demand on BuddhaVideos.com. So whatever format that you want to watch this in, it's going to be there for you. And I think a lot of you guys are going to enjoy that. Last new product to talk about today is a brand new Shoyu Roll Gi. Uh, people are always asking me, when can I get one? Well, your time's coming up. This is next Tuesday. It's going to be available. This is called the Cements Gi. It's uh, navy blue. We had a white version of this gi available at the pan in limited quantities, and those uh, there's a big line, and they sold out really quickly. So I uh, expect the same from this one. Has everything that you want from a Shoyu Roll gi: contrast stitching, super comfortable pants, uh, really soft but durable jacket. Uh, what can I say? You guys that have Shoyu Rolls know how great they are. The Shoyu Roll Navy Cement Ski will go on sale on Friday, April 19th at 10 a.m. on budovideos.com. Okay, it's that time of the show where we talk about promotions. If you know of anybody that's getting promoted, maybe it's yourself, maybe it's your friend, maybe your instructor, whenever somebody gets a black belt, we like to give them a shout out on the show. So whenever that happens, just send an email to us at twibjj at budovideos.com and we'll ha be happy to show a picture and uh, tell them a little bit about your story. We got uh, three different promotions today. The first one is Gibran Alvarez. He's the head of uh, GB, Gracie Baja Rivera Carm Carmen. He was promoted on April 6th by Carlos Limos Jr. Next up, we got Patrick Miller and Donovan Grutz. This is Patrick on the far left and Donovan on the far right. They were both promoted by Marcio La Selva on March 29th. And lastly, we have Nico DeHaan and Tom Palito. These guys are both promoted by Eduardo de Lima out of Clearwater, Florida on April 6th. Now, Nico, he's the, uh, the guy receiving his belt right there. He is 68 years old, trains four times a week, and competes regularly. And uh, this now marks 30 American black belts under Eduardo. Congratulations, guys. So recently, uh, we released the long-awaited Rolled Up Alliance Headquarters episode. This featured Lucas Lepri, Ian McPherson, and Jacques Array, and it's getting great reviews on YouTube right now. So I hope you guys check it out if you haven't already. Um, we're going to show a little preview clip here. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Some guys' mentality sometimes uh, they they need to understand that jiu-jitsu is not just how you train and how you compete, but it's how you behave outside the mats. Most people they are gentlemen, but we still have some guys that they don't understand the philosophy of the martial arts. That is a long journey, is a spiritual journey, and they have to evolve and get to be better individuals in, in, in general. For being success in this sport, you, you gotta do your best, you gotta just do that for your life. The competition is not just in the mat, but it's out for the preparation, you know, it's already a competition every day. Pretty much you just wake up, take breakfast, go to training and then come back and eat and then rest for a few hours and then train again. For being successful in this sport, you, you gotta do your best, you gotta just do that for your life, you know. Uh, you, you need to win, so it becomes a very serious thing to train and like 
I, it's a responsibility to be training and make sure that you, I'm in the right, right path to, to the victory, you know? Hey guys, welcome back. Now we're here live with Yuri Simoes. Yuri, thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you, Blue Video Sir. Welcome here. <laughs> so uh, I was surprised today before we, start, we started, you told me that you're living in Australia now. Yeah. How did that come about? Um, you know, last year after the Worlds, I was looking for a place to teach, you know, because that's like every black belt in Jiu Jitsu, you know, that's how you have to, to do. You have to train and have your school teach. That's the way to make money in Jiu Jitsu. So I was looking for a place to, to work. And then um, yeah, uh, I got an email from Kid Dale from Melbourne. And he's, he, he offered me this opportunity in Melbourne into fitness, into fitness gym. And then I went there, <coughs> met the guys and everything. Everything went well. So, you know, I started teaching there. Just came over to America to do my camp to the world championship. Uh, kids taking over the the class now. Actually, now he's on Abu Dhabi fighting. He got second place. So, yeah. So was moving to Australia just an opportunity that came about or was that some place that you wanted to go? Uh, I always wanted to meet Australia because I always heard good stuff about Australia, you know. So, you know, I never imagined to, you know, end up teaching there, but was a place that I always wanted to go anyway. So I think it's good, you know, because after I went there, I'm like, man, I love this place. It's really, it's really good, really cool. So I'm happy there, you know. It's cool. Rio de Janeiro is a beautiful city with great beaches. How does it compare to Australia? Mm. Yeah, Rio, it's beautiful. Australia is beautiful too, but I think uh, with jiu-jitsu, like the economy there and everything, I think it's better to teach, you know, to make money with jiu-jitsu there than in Brazil right now. You know. A lot of jiu-jitsu guys want to come to California. You know, the, the climate's nice, all the tournaments are here. Would you rather be here or do you feel like it's a better opportunity for you in Brazil? Um, I mean, about the competition, like that's the only part that I think you know, I miss, you know, to, I think right now USA is it's better than in Brazil in, in these uh, terms, like competition terms, but, you know, that's the only thing that like keeps me, making me come come to, to US, the tournaments, you know? So I think that's the only uh, part that sucks because it's not many tournaments over there. Mm. So, you know, I have to always keep coming to America to compete or to Brazil, so yeah. And so that's why you're here, getting ready for the world championships. Yes. Who have you been training with to get ready? Oh man, all these guys, all these monsters, Lucas, uh, João, Bochecha, you know, Lapela, Sharpe, all these guys, you name it, and <laughs> just so many guys. I, I'm sorry if I forgot someone here, but it's a lot. I've been to some of the check mat training sessions before the major events, and it seems like it surprises me that there aren't any injuries because you guys go at it like crazy. Oh, yeah. Is the training always like that, that intense? Yeah, we like to make you like closer as possible to the competition, you know? So when you get to the competition, we don't get surprised with whatever comes in the competition, you know, whatever, you know, we just bring it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, we try to go hard, you know? We do we do drills, we do everything else, but when we roll, we try to make it real, you know? But I think we we getting used to, we don't get as, uh, so many injuries, so we're doing well. Mm -hmm. You know, we go hard, but we don't go crazy, you know? You know, so yeah. Right. In the recent episode of uh, of Rolled Up, uh, Jacare says that Atos is their biggest rival. Um, do you feel like uh, that's accurate, or do you think Checkmat should be higher on that list of rivals? I think Checkmat, you know, the open the black belt open weight champion is from Checkmat. You know, if you see, like, we have a lot of yeah, Atos is, is really good for sure, man. You know, one of the best teams. But I think like we have more you know, high level athletes. Uh, right now they have Keenan and all these guys, right? Mm -hmm. they, they went to Atos, but yeah, I think it's still Checkmat. Certainly at the start. higher, at the heavier weight classes, Checkmat seems to be stronger and Otto seems to be stronger at the lower weight classes. Would you, do you agree with that statement? Uh, I do, yeah. I mean, we don't have much uh, lighter weights. I think if I remember, Esquisito, we have, uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't really know the lower belts. I think uh, Skizito is super featherweight, uh, light featherweight. I think he's the main guy. We have another guy from Manaus. I forgot his name. Uh, he he he's got always he wins uh, the Brazilian national. Gabriel Gabriel Moraes. Mm. I think that's it. In like like because Ricardo, Leozinho, these guys don't compete. He's, they are like coach now. So I mean, 
like competition team, I think like two, three guys maybe. And Natos has a lot of, you know, great guys in a light, lightweight division. Right. Yuri, let's go back to the beginning of your jiu-jitsu. <laughs> Tell me who the guys that uh, that you train with. When I started? Yeah. Uh, I started jiu-jitsu in very small academy, you know. I, I didn't know I was going to compete or anything. I started watching uh, Hickson and Hoyce Gracie with my father. So I I used to train with Fabio. His name was Fabio, nicknamed Fabio, in a place really close to my house. And I, I had no idea. You know, I, I went to jiu-jitsu mostly, like, just to discipline, I was a crazy kid. <laughs> just to like discipline myself, you know, lose weight. I was very chubby. I'm still chubby, but I was worse. And you know, I end up like fell in love with the sport. You know, my parents <laughs> always they they support me 100. percent You know, thanks God, they always, you know, they were always there for me. And uh, I moved to Mauriçon. He was he used to be. The, the the owner of Hunt and Fightwear. And then he like he was he had many like students high level now like Fabrizio Verdun is in a in a UFC. He was his student too. I met him over there. And he died. He has like a, he got shot and he died, you know. So I you know I met Ari. Ari was already living with me in my house and everything. Ari and Bruno and they were training with Ricardo Vieira. Uh, back that was Braza. And, you know, they, they they always used to call me, you know, let's go train there, you know. And after that happened, you know, I <clears throat> I didn't want to, like, I felt, like, really emotional in the team because, you know, all the memories of my master was really close. So I moved to train, to train with them. And, and uh, you know, everything worked perfect. You know, I started winning tournaments. I didn't have, a, like, had a great... Uh, I, w- I didn't have a great like uh, titles before that. I didn't like success before before I moved to Braza. That's the truth to Ricardo Vieira. And then after I moved, I started like competing and you know getting to know more and more and going like all the bigger tournaments, biggest tournaments, and you know being successful. And you know I just like I'm like okay, I think I can do that. You know, and that was it. So who would you say is your main technical influence? Is it Ricardo? Oh, it's many people, you know. My father, I would say, like, you mean, sorry, the coach? Who influences your techniques the most? Oh, the techniques. Uh, I would say three people, you know, three three guys. Uh, Ricardo, Ari, and I think Lucas Leitz, too, you know. Since I met him, he's also helping me a lot. It's like different parts of my life, but they all, they, they all play a good part on my, you know, on my game, you know. So you mentioned Ari Farias. He's uh, is a great black belt competitor. Uh, tell me about your relationship with him. Oh man, we are like even because a lot of people don't know. Oh, do you guys a brother? You know, you know. We used to be the same team. We used to be Isley Betting. You know, back in two thousand four, two thousand yeah two thousand four, and then he was from when I was in, uh, from Rio. He and my other uh, adopted brother Bruno. And they will, they used to always come and stay in Rio too because the Brasileiro, the Mundials was in Rio. So they used to come in Rio and they stayed in my house. And my parents, they, they used to go there and, you know, they were really like uh, close to my parents. You know, they, they felt really welcome in home. And we just started getting like, you know, more closer, closer, everybody, the family. And, you know, they, they started calling my parents, you know, their parents too. So, my parents just like, you know, come home, they accept them as a son. We've been together, I don't know. They've been living in my home with, with me, like in a family for, I don't know, like nine years, eight years. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like a, they, he's like really a brother for me, you know. A lot of a lot of things uh, I've learned in Jiu-Jitsu from, come from, from Adi. From not just his technique, but his mentality in the tournaments too. You know, he's like very focused, and uh, that <clears throat> that's like a mirror for me. You know, I I, I want to be like that too. So he was always like one belt higher than me. Now we're, we're both like, but he was always one belt belt higher than me. So it was always someone that was looking like up. You know, to be like like him. You know, I learned so much to him. I just he's he's a great guy. <laughs> that's cool. So you got your black belt at the end of 2011. And then at the first PAN, after that, uh, the tw- 2012 PAN Jiu-Jitsu tournament, you had a great performance, and you closed out the division with uh, uh, Lucas. With Lucas. 
you had a match with uh, Rafael Lovato Jr., and it was super close. But some people criticized you that uh, it was wasn't they didn't see more they wanted to see more action. Yeah. How do you feel when you I hear mean, that criticism? You know, man, I was a blue belt. He was a champion of black belt. You know, I, it was my first tournament as a black belt. You know, I saw that, like, I went there to win, you know? I went there to win, and if you see the video, you see that I attack full locks, I attack knee bars, you know? He was complaining a lot in the fight, you know? I was quiet, I respected him as a fighter. I respected him, you know, like, as everything that he done in the sport, and, you know, he was talking a lot of things. You know, after the fight, I went to, to, to tell him it was an honor, and he's like, yeah, next time, let's fight. You know, like, he said things unnecessary, you know, because I, <clears throat> I wasn't there to disrespect anybody. I was there to win and to fight, you know. So that's what I go. I want to win. So, yeah, people say a lot, but, like, you ha say between you say and you do is a different thing. You know, a lot of people can say, but, you know, when you get there, people that judge, they don't do anything. So I'm not worried about, like, people comment. You know, I, I made a goal, like I made a dream come true because I closed the brackets with like one of my biggest idols, uh, Lucas, you know, so I'm not really worried about that. You know, I, I hope to fight these guys again, like, you know, because I'm not a guy that complains if I lose, I lose, if I win, I win, you know, unless like something crazy. But everybody saw the fight, you know, you know, I, the fight is there. I think you guys have the fight on the DVD or something yep. too. Yep. Yeah, so they can check it out. <laughs> so who are you looking forward to compete against at the Worlds? Uh, I'm not looking. F honestly, I don't. I'm not looking forward to to compete against someone specifically. I, I'm looking forward to win. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I hope to get the toughest guy in the first second fight because that's what I'm training for. You know, man. You know, I'm training hard and I didn't come expecting it's gonna be easy. You know, I'm ready for war. <laughs> you're gonna do a few more tournaments while you're here in the states. What what other tournaments are you gonna yeah. compete? In? Yeah, I'm gonna compete like uh, four or five tournaments. I'm gonna do like the um, next week the American Cup. Then right after I fight the Vegas Open or Spring Vegas, and after that uh, Dallas, I'm gonna fight in Dallas, and then uh, I'll do the Naga Open in San Diego. Wow, you're really so, making yeah. the most of your stay. Yeah, I wanna because you know Australia, like I said, not a, not as much tournaments. I fought the Pen Packs and, and I did a super match there, but. That was there. Yeah, I was craving like to fight. I was, I was hungry for fight, but there was no many tournaments there. So now that I'm here, I want to you know compete as much as I can. Great. We look forward to seeing you out there. Thank you, man. So we're gonna go to the mats now. And um, have you decided what you're gonna teach today? Oh, cool. So, what are you gonna show us today? Um, I'm gonna do show a full lock from the uh, spider guard. Okay. Yeah. A lot of checkmat guys are really good with the foot attacks. Kavaka, Bushesha, and you. Is that a? Do you think that's a checkmat focus? Uh, maybe I think so. Uh, I mean, like, why not? You know, if he's in the rule to to attack the foot, you know, and I think it, when you you go for the submission, any submission, foot or amba or cho, you open another opportunity. If you don't submit the guy, you sometimes attack the foot and the guy don't tap, but he rolls and I get two points, so I can go to the back, you know. So it's allowed, you know. Yeah. So why not? All right. Before we go, <laughs> anything else you want to add? Uh, no, I just want to say thank you, my sponsor, Cheryl. I want to thank you guys. Thank you, Jake and Buddha Videos for the oppo opportunity. I want to thank uh, SubSRS in Australia, my supplement sponsorship, and uh, Into Fitness. Say hi to my team there. And that's it. Keep watching out for me, guys. This year, I'm going to go hard. <laughs> Sounds good. Don't go anywhere, guys. We're going to be right back on the mats to learn a really cool footlock from Yuri Samoas.